Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Charlie and I make videos about eating disorders, especially bulimia. Um, I first put out a bunch of videos a couple of years ago talking about my experiences with bulimia and with bulimia recovery. Um, at that point in my life, I was living in Thailand. I had been living in Bali for a while as well. And I had been about 99.9% .9 recovered for a solid five years. Um, I was sharing very honest and, I guess, candid accounts of what it's like to be really in the depths of um, a really gripping addiction like bulimia. And I got fantastic responses from people who I never expected to have struggled with bulimia. I got so many messages from random people all over the world saying that they'd never heard anyone talk this way about bulimia and how comforting they found it. Um, to hear someone talk about what it's actually like to struggle with this addiction. I got messages from friends of mine who I had known years ago who had been suffering from bulimia either at that time or had suffered from it for years later or at the time of writing they were suffering. Um, again, thanking me for my honesty and telling me what a comfort it was to hear someone finally talk honestly yeah, about what it's really like because I see all these recovery influencers who I still follow a lot of, um, and I'll get to more of that later. I see lots of recovery influencers um, talking about anorexia and restricting food, orthorexia, uh, and they'll go into detail there, but when they touch upon their bulimia, they don't talk about the real disgusting, horrible, shameful things that bulimics do, such as vomiting in the middle of the street when there's no public toilet to vomit in. Um, I used to lock myself in pub toilets and binge and purge in there. One time I actually got walked in on, it was probably the most shameful moment of my entire life. Um, sifting through puke with your hands to see what came out, like all of these things to someone who's had bulimia, it's like, yeah, standard <laughs> um but it's something that is not talked about and shared like people when they're talking about their experiences of this disorder that affects so many people they won't they'll just lightly touch upon it like they'll mention that there was some purging um and that it was horrible and that they had a puffy and swollen face the next day which is something we all know about and probably hate but they won't go into depth on yeah the disgusting things that make bulimia such a truly awful disease to suffer from um i've suffered from many addictions in my life drugs alcohol starvation food addiction and that's separate to bulimia and i've also yeah been addicted to binging and purging and the addiction to binging and purging is by 10 million trillion billion miles the worst it's the one that really fucks with your self-esteem and your views of who you are as a person the most you really feel like an absolute piece of shit it makes you lie to people it makes you eat other people's food um and just do all these things that you would never normally do. Like, I remember one time, and the memory of this still, like 10 years later, just fills me with sadness and grief. Um, I remember one time I was in London with my university friends and I didn't live in the same city as them. And I rarely saw them. And it was like a, a gathering for all of us to meet up. And halfway through, I remember coming up to my two best friends and saying that I was going to meet someone else. And I was actually gonna go and sneak off and buy a load of food and hide in the toilets of a cafe and eat and then be sick. 
because my addiction was that bad. Like I'd binge and purge already that morning before I'd gotten the train to London. And I couldn't just go like seven or eight hours without doing it. I think we'd probably already been out for lunch and I undoubtedly would have purged that lunch as well. Um, so the addiction was really that strong that I looked into the eyes of my two best friends and lied to them and they knew I was lying. And in at the, at the time of it happening, deep down inside of me, I knew they knew that I was lying but I think I was lying to myself that they didn't know. But now years later, having come out and spoken honestly to them and to the world and everyone in my Facebook contacts and everyone on YouTube about my problems, I know for a fact that the cat was out of the bag. Way more people knew that I was unwell than I thought. And these two friends, they definitely knew. Um, they had been by my side for the year at university when it had been really, really bad. And they were fully aware of it. Like, I'm guessing it was glaringly obvious, even though I was doing everything that I thought I could to keep it hidden, keep it a secret. And I just remember the look in their faces um, and thinking back to that memory just, yeah, it just makes me so upset. And reminds me of countless times with my mum as well. When I had moved out of home and I was living in the city nearby to her and we'd meet for dinner. And after that dinner, I would look into her eyes and tell her that I was going home. Um, and in fact, I wasn't going home. I was going straight to the supermarket and again to some random ass public toilet somewhere to eat my food and throw up. And I could tell by the way that she looked at me when she was about to hug me and the way that she hugged me, it was a hug that was full of sadness and anguish. Um, and I guess like disbelief. Uh, yeah, I, I could just tell that she knew what I was about to do. And yeah, the memory of that, I'll, I'm, I'm never gonna forget that. It's never gonna stop filling me with sadness. All those years that I ruined, particularly for my mum, who is elderly, she's now in her 70s, breaks my fucking heart. Anyway, um, the point of today's video is I need to come clean because I'm still getting messages and comments from people um, two and a half years after I posted these videos. And I don't I want to position myself to anyone as being better or further ahead of anyone else in terms of my recovery from this addiction. Um, it's two years later and since I'd say the beginning of January and the end of December, a lot of things in my life have changed and become very challenging and I have fallen back into bulimia. Um, yeah, I've sat down to make this video a few times actually, um, but the first time it was really convoluted and too long. So today I'm just gonna keep it short, but I wanted to make a video in solidarity with everyone else out there who is suffering. <sighs> because this addiction is tricky, you think you've beaten it, and then some circumstances might change in your life or you need a friend and it comes back because I think we all know that despite the severity of its just sheer awfulness, bulimia does provide you with something. It does provide you with a friend, something that is always there, something that will fill up the void inside of you and create that void well I mean yeah so it's filling a void it's filling a, like a void of emptiness inside of you with something to focus on something to do something to nourish you but then it's also creating a void inside of you as well because I know for me I get triggered when I'm anxious 
when I'm unhappy and I've been very anxious recently and very unhappy because of some things that are happening in my life. I'll go into it in a different video. I want to keep this short. So yeah, I was talking about the void. It fills a void and it also creates a void. And what I mean by it creates a void is it silences that anxiety. And so for the last few months, I have been binging and purging semi-regularly. And I told myself again and again and again that I wasn't relapsing, I was just slipping up. I wasn't relapsing, I was just slipping up. And the two are very different things. And I do still believe that. I think someone can be recovered from bulimia and still have slip ups from time to time. And it doesn't mean they're relapsing. Um, but it's clear now to me that I've actually relapsed. Um, and I'm sitting here able to make this video to you, for you, sorry, um, because despite the fact that this is happening, with everything that I've learned and all the tools that I've gained and the knowledge that I have acquired over the last six years since I really made my giant leap forward in terms of recovering from bulimia, I know that it's not going to get any worse than it is now. Like I have, I have complete faith in myself. I trust myself. It's like I'm standing on the edge of a cliff and I'm looking down into the abyss and I'm stealing this metaphor from Glennon Doyle. Just need to credit her for that. So I'm standing on the edge of a cliff and I'm looking down into the abyss and I could jump. I know I could jump, it's quite possible. I'm, I'm standing on the edge already. Like I've come from, I've come from the light and I've chosen to walk to the edge of the cliff and I'm looking down, but I have complete faith and trust in myself that I'm not gonna jump and that I will come back up. And I have that faith because I've been here so many times before. And I'm different now to how I was before when I was jumping off the cliff. So yeah, that's it really. Um, I feel to point out that in the midst of the worst of my addiction, I was binging and purging like 10, 15 times a day it was ridiculous. It was completely out of control. Whereas now, I mean, at first it was only happening like once a month and then it gradually started happening more. You know how it is like when you slip up and you have a binge and you purge, the likelihood of it happening again over the next like week is massively increased. And I think that's down to brain chemistry. Um, the day after a binge and a purge, just like I'm feeling right now, putting it out there, being honest, 100% um, honest. The day after a binge and purge, your serotonin is all fucked up and you feel shaky and anxious and just shit really and despite the fact that i'm not ashamed of my bulimia anymore i talk about it regularly to friends strangers that i meet it still annoys me that i have these episodes and it's not it's not self-hate it's changed now it's not self-hatred that i feel the next day it's just disappointment in myself and sadness for myself which I guess comes from a place of more compassion, which is a good thing because previously I just hated myself and thought I was a piece of shit. Um, anyway, so the next day when I'm carrying that sadness and that heavy feeling and like, oh no, uh, my brain chemistry is all fucked and I'm anxious and I'm shaky, I'm far more likely to be drawn towards a temporary coping mechanism, which is for me, binging and purging. It's the best coping mechanism I've ever found. And I've had many. Um, yeah, so for the next week, I, we, you, 
are more likely to slip up again and yeah because my living circumstances have changed and have been really difficult and so so challenging Mm -hmm. it's just been happening a lot um so now i'd say it happens on average two or three times a week which isn't terrible like in the midst of the worst of my addiction if you told me i could get to a place where i was just purging five times a week even i'd consider myself like recovered i would have taken that so i've still come a long way and i'm proud of the way that i have come that there is a way to go and i am getting help i'm going to therapy i'm going to counseling (sighs) finally hopefully getting tools that i never actually got because I was in treatment for years for my eating disorders. I've had one since I was 13 and I'm now almost 32. So that's coming on two decades that I've had an eating disorder. Um, But for the vast majority of that time, I was reluctant to be helped and I would go to therapy and I would lie and I would not listen and kind of be like, la 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 la. And I would fake my weight by drinking loads of water beforehand and all that crap that we do. But this time I welcome the help with open arms and I'm really looking forward to getting out of this rut that I found myself in. And I know I will, but it was important to me to share this in the midst of my shit (laughs) because previously I was sharing from the other side of the shitstorm and I think people do that and that's great that there are people out there so openly sharing about their problems that they've had in the past and overcome and sharing wisdom and tips on how to overcome these things but I think it's very different and possibly more helpful or at least more comforting to people who are currently struggling, to hear from others who are also currently struggling, and I'm currently struggling. And this is just my message of solidarity to all of you. And I think that's it for this video. I'm just gonna post it as it is. I'm not gonna watch it back. (laughs) So yeah, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll be making more videos soon stay strong bulimia is the worst but we can get over it we can